Good evening. As you said, my name is Jason Hardy, and I appreciate the opportunity to spend this to spend this time with you. What I do for a living is a bit unusual. For the past 17 years, I've made my living as an opera singer, recitalist, and concert soloist. Lately, I've been looking to expand my career into into the field of sorry, am I right? Lately, I've been looking to expand my reach into the field of presentation and public speaking. But I'm not here to sing an aria tonight, nor do I have a seminar to promote or product presentation to deliver. I'd simply like to share a story. Several weeks ago, I was driving my daughter home from school, a 10-year-old named Sabrina, and she told me about a project she had to do. The assignment required her to write a story on any subject that inspired her. She told me she wanted to write a story about, about her mom. Daddy, she said to me, I don't want to talk about how my mom died, because that would make the other, because that would make the other kids sad. What she said next took my breath away. She said in a very matter-of-fact sort of way, instead, I want to talk about how she lived. I know, in the mouth of babes. Well, because of that, Sabrina and I have been watching a lot of home movies lately, and it's easy to see in them that my late wife, Evelyn, lived for people, for experiences, for experiences and relationships. She set an example of how to discover the joy of life, even in the most difficult of circumstances. That, that is an important message. Sadly, it's one I didn't get at the time. You see, several years ago, I found myself in a pretty ideal life situation. I had a wonderful family, fulfilling job, nice house, nice cars, family vacations, dinners, church on Sundays. It was picture perfect. And I'd love to tell you that during that period, I was full of pure joy. But I wasn't. In, 2000, in 2007, my wife, Bevelyn, passed away after her battle with breast cancer. And I'd love to tell you that during this period, I dug deep within myself and discovered the inner peace of God, which she seemed to have even in the face of death. But I didn't. Immediately following that terrible tragedy, I saw the face of evil. It took away just about everything I had. And I was left a single parent with nothing to my name except a good credit score. And I'd love to tell you that I got over the pain of that betrayal with forgiveness and even gratitude. Nope. A few years later, I was blessed to be in a new relationship with an incredible woman. Her name was Carrie. She was beautiful and intelligent, spontaneous and spiritual. And I'd love to tell you that after all I'd been through, I had figured out the riddle of life, of, of good communication, of real connected relationship. I wish I could tell you that. Carrie seemed to be everything I could have wished for, everything I was looking for, and yet something was missing. So we broke up. I was in New York, in the middle of the most high-profile gig of my career. At least I had that going for me, right? Well, my life was full of chaos, loneliness, heartache. But then something amazing happened. I went for a walk in Central Park and sat down on a bench. It was literally the first time that I, Jason Hardy, could be found sitting still in years. And I'll tell you what I thought about in that moment as I sat on that bench. Absolutely nothing. But it was amazing. Time stood still, my mind didn't wander. In, in fact, my mind just kind of shut down. For a few minutes, I just forgot how to think. Outside of my mode of this workaholic, concerned with efficiency and strategy, glued to my smartphone and my laptop, my MO at the time was constant motion. 
Here I just allowed myself to just stop, to just be. It was a prayer of sorts, but one of mental silence. I didn't hear a voice, nor did I visualize anything or, or, or wish for anything. Like I said, it might have been just a few minutes, but it was for me unlike any sense of calm I had ever experienced. On the card at each table, I've printed a few verses from Matthew 6. Here Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So what is the kingdom of God, and how do I find his righteousness? Well, Jesus proclaimed that the kingdom of God is at hand. This doesn't imply a future event. At hand is here. It's now. It's in the present. So if it's here, how do I find the kingdom of God? Well, in Romans 14, we read, For the kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Remember that. It sounds easy to live joyously in the moment. But my constantly thinking mind is what gets in the way. My mind likes to recall and relive past stories of triumphs and tragedies, victim stories and resentments, remorse, guilt. My mind also likes to strategize and plan for what's ahead. Heck, we're all in this room on a quest to find that next helpful contact maybe get that interview and land that next job. There's a lot of good to be found in setting goals and striving to achieve things, but I can tell you I've spent my life being driven by discontent. In my quest to find personal fulfillment, none of my success was ever enough. Listen, in those life-changing moments, in those life-pausing moments, like when I sat on that bench in Central Park, I become aware of the divine that is within me, the Holy Spirit, the gift of peace, which, by the way, just to be clear, is not the absence of chaos in my life. I learned that I may not be happy with my life circumstance, but I can still have joy. So it was time to start living. So I decided to go after the girl. Well, last year, I married her. And after a couple, couple months of flirting with the idea, we went to the rescue and, and got ourselves a dog with sad, droopy eyes and the softest, longest ears you could ever want, and the source of countless smiles. Her name's Goldie. Well, not long after that, Carrie got home from work one evening and found a letter from Sabrina asking if she could be adopted too. Well, I'm happy to say that last fall, Carrie legally adopted Sabrina. And now our story is, is one of living in the moment, growing in relationships, and treating each day as if it were our last. Which brings me back to Sabrina's desire to tell the inspiring story of how her first mom lived. It's my job to help her tell that story by being her living example. Honestly, though, wouldn't you all agree that children are the master teachers of that art? They show us how to experience joy. They're fearless in spite of their absolute vulnerability. They show us, by example, how to live in the present, how to experience the kingdom of God. I'd like to leave you with an excerpt from a hymn that we sang at our wedding last year, which serves as my reminder.
Hallelujah. 